he opened the door of the shed and his hen ran out. <coughs> Glyn looked in her nest. But there was no egg. No egg at all. He opened the hen coop and all Mum's hens ran out. He looked in their nests. There was an egg in every single one. All the hens had laid an egg except for his hen. Well, perhaps she didn't like being moved, said Mum. There'll be an egg tomorrow. Glyn went for the eggs again the next day, but still his hen hadn't laid an egg. And all that week there was no egg in the nest in the shed. Oh, Glyn was very sad. He was disappointed that his hen hadn't laid an egg, and he knew if she didn't soon, he wouldn't be allowed to keep her. He went up to the rough patch at the top of the garden to see her. Well, that's where she liked to go. She'd certainly scratched over the ground a lot. Well, he looked around for her, but he couldn't see her anywhere. But then he heard her cackling. She squawked. And she ran out from under the hedge. Glyn peeped under the hedge and he saw a nest. Her very own nest. And in the nest were six lovely brown eggs and two speckled ones. Well, Glyn counted them very carefully. There were eight eggs, one for every day since his birthday. Well, he was delighted. He couldn't carry eight eggs in his hands, so he very carefully put them inside his jersey and carried them up to the house. Mum! Mum! he shouted. I've found the eggs. She's been laying them up at the rough patch under the hedge. She's built a nest there. Mum nodded. She lays away. Well, some hens do. You'll have to fetch the eggs from there from now on. I will, said Glyn. And he did too. And he had some lovely breakfasts. <laughs> five eggs out of that little chicken and there's some more eggs hidden around somewhere here try and spot them with me Look about back there hmm you seen one yet ah there's one little chocolate egg wonder if cuckoo's got any Nothing in the side door. Um, aha! Two! Another big chocolate egg. Let's have a look on the pencil box. Nothing at the bottom. Uh, there's one. It's got a wh on it. Wh for Wayne. Must be my egg, that one. Now then, on the teacup. Well, there's some flowers. Nothing in there. Ah, can you see something right up the top there? Yes, there's an egg. One of the eggs that Liz was decorating. That's four. Now, there's a fifth one somewhere. Humpty, have you got one? Ah, oh, he has. <laughs> Humpty was so big. He was hiding that egg. I couldn't see it from over there. Two more eggs here. But these eggs are different from the other eggs. They've got their tops cut off and if I tilt this one, can you see there's some seeds in the top? Underneath that is some damp cotton wool. And those are cress seeds. And if I leave those for a few days, perhaps they'll grow and this little egg face will have some hair on it. This is egg butt, this one. And this one over here is, oh, well, this one hasn't got a face on it. Right, better draw one. Eyes. It's my brows. 
two little dots for the nose and a big bright smiley mouth and two little rosy cheeks one there and one there a bright colorful face called Megan And here's another bright, colourful face. Oh, Beverly's having her face painted by her mum. There's the paint. Can you see that she's got spring flowers on her eyes? She has to keep still while the lips are being done. In India, they have a spring festival called Holy. And the people there paint their faces. And they paint their hands too, just for fun. And this is Iqbal. He's painting that girl's hand with henna. I think it's a clock pattern. Those are snakes. Now Peter's drawn round his hand, made a colourful pattern, and he's cutting the hand shape out to stick onto a large piece of paper to make a chicken. You see, all those feathers are actually hand shapes. Something else that people do in the Holy Festival is to make flowers into garlands. These children are making some paper flowers. Give it a final twist and that's the flower done. Now they can be threaded onto pieces of string. And there's the garlands of paper flowers that can be worn like necklaces. making Poppy an Easter bonnet. I've already made Jemima one, so I'm making another one here. This is something you could try making just with an old paper plate. It's more like a dish shape, really. And then over it is a net bag, the sort that you get oranges in. And I'm just making some paper flowers to stick round the side. I think I need one more for this space here. So I've got an old sweet paper here. That makes good middle for the flower. I scrunch it up. And then piece of tissue paper for the petals and then to hold it all together an old milk bottle top if I just twist that round there twist it round be able to poke it through the net there the bonnet's nearly finished all it needs is a ribbon to tie it on. Just put that over the top. Let's see if it fits. There we are, Poppy. Is your bonnet finished? Just tie it under your chin. 
Oh, that looks very smart. There. Can you see today, Poppy's wearing a new necklace. This was sent in by a girl called Julia. There. Poppy and Jemima are all ready for the Easter parade. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, would you care to take a stroll? Oh, we'd love to. Here you are. Come along, Jemima. In your Easter bonnet, with all the frills upon it, you'll be the grandest lady at the Easter parade. Smart in your Easter bonnet. Really suits you. Can you see what time it says on Cuckoo's clock today? Well, the long hand's pointing straight down. It's gone halfway around the clock, so that means it's half past something. And the short hand has just passed the three, nearly on to the next number, so that means it's half past three. Well, it's time for us to go now. Perhaps you could try making a hat for one of your toys. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. I think I'll go and put these in a dark place. And then perhaps on Friday, I can see if any hair has sprouted. See you tomorrow. Didn't the toys' hats look fab? I loved cuckoos at the end there. We'll do some more birthdays in just a sec, but first of all, I must say good morning to Carolyn Brown, who's just come out of hospital for an eye operation. So, Carolyn, good morning. Hope you get better soon. Now then, on with the birthdays. And here is a mysterious silver box with a picture of Rachel Smith on the front. And who is inside? Woomph. It's Postman Pat's cat, Jess, who's popped out to say happy birthday. Uh, Rachel is five today, and it comes with love from Mummy, Daddy, Brother Anthony, and Jess, her cat, as well as Postman Pat's cat. So I hope you have a super day, Rachel. Another Postman Pat here, Postman Pat and Jess, to say happy fifth birthday to Christopher Baker. And that comes with love from Mummy, Daddy, and Jonathan, too. Viewers in Scotland, we're just going to say goodbye to you, but we'll see you in about ten minutes. But now, on with the birthday cards, and here is a Mr. Man very colourful Mr Man as well, to say happy birthday to Andrew. Andrew is four today and it comes with love from Sandra, Ian and Gordon and Jane as well and Lucky, Cindy and Ginger the cats and Sarah the dog as well. So I hope you have a super day. Now then, on the subject of fabulous colours, look at this one. It's a fabulous, very colourful uh, parrot to say happy birthday. It says on the bottom, look, happy birthday Totty, who I assume is Tom Harding's uh, nickname. So happy birthday, Tom. And that comes with love from Mummy, Daddy, Big Brother Georgie, and Anna as well. Sorry we didn't have time to show all the cards, but I hope you saw yours on the pin board. And if it is your birthday today, happy birthday. Now we're off on our holidays with Spot. <laughs> Looks like Spot had a fab time on his holiday, and hopefully the Peanuts gang will as well, because they're off on an exchange visit to France in Bon Voyage Charlie Brown. That's after 5 to 11. <laughs>